that is hurting. Remember that when I said they would co cooperate, that was still knowing that they regretted their role in this. They regretted from the start their role in all of this incident. So they're, they're, they're at least grateful they can put this behind them. Bola, actually, thank you for reminding me. He's going to be fighting tonight uh, for with USA Boxing. He's down in Shreveport, Louisiana. He's been aware. We've been calling and texting him this whole time. He won his fight last night, so he would love to have been here, but we haven't been able to clone him just yet. Absolutely, Matt. Uh, Bola and Ola will they'll tell their story when they're ready. This this venue is more for you guys and it's more on your terms. They want to be able to say their story on their terms and that will happen very soon. The question was how did Ola and Bola react to their name being dragged in the mud? It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good when it's on a national and international stage. It doesn't feel good when it's at the local high school. Nobody likes that. But it is what it is when it comes to litigation. We understand that Mr. Smollett had to put on the case he had to put on. It's unfortunate that they had to do it in this fashion. I certainly wouldn't have done it that way. But it's time to heal. Uh, Bill, did you have a question? Well, I want to ask you about you, if you anticipate any um legal action against Mr. Smollett as we move forward? The, uh, the question was any legal action against Mr. Smollett, I assume by the Austin Dyer brothers. Yes, yes. We, we're not even there. That's a problem for another day. We're so tired. These, these have been long, long, long days and hours. Um, I personally still have a practice to run. I have a little baby at home that I can't wait to get back to. She's 12 months old. My son Dylan just had a birthday. So my daughter, Tessie, turned five. There's been a lot going on in, in this case. Um, any other questions? <clears throat> I apologize if I'm not using my Nigerian accent tonight. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to wish my brother luck tonight in his boxing match. And Nigerian American lives matter. Anything about the murder, Noah? Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. I don't know. They still have it. Yeah, and we're waiting for the defense team to come down. Yenye Uche, the lead defense attorney for Jussie Smollett, has still not made his appearance. We're told that he is going to speak. Uh, and we just heard from Gloria Rodriguez, the attorney for the Osandaro brothers. We were hoping to hear from Ola Osandaro, who is here. He oh, spoke only briefly, and you took notes as to what he said. Yeah, it was very brief. All he said was he wished his brother Bola, who we heard lengthy testimony from last week, he wished him luck in a fight, a boxing match that he's in tonight in Louisiana. Uh, his his attorney said that he was in one last night. All his brother said was he wished him luck, and he said, quote, Nigerian lives matter. That's all he had to say. He did not respond when asked about the verdict. And his boxing acumen actually came to the fore during the trial because uh, Dan Webb pointed out that uh, he is one of the best amateur-ranked boxers in the country right now, and that if, uh, if he had actually been serious about attacking Jussie Smollett, he could have done a lot more damage than just a little bit of scratch on the nose. Yeah, that's right, and we heard from the doctor, of course, who treated Jussie Smollett uh, during the trial here, and he said that those injuries were not, uh, were not very sufficient, were not very deep, those injuries that he sustained. Jussie, on the other hand, arguing that he did suffer injuries and said he still has a scar on his... Uh, under his left eye. So, well, we haven't seen the jurors either. Uh, they have been coming out the front entrance uh, during the course of the trial. And uh, as we were reporting earlier, Judge Lynn has instructed them not to speak to the media on the side. Oh, now we're going to turn the camera around here. We're getting some indication that uh, possibly the defense team or possibly 
other individuals involved with the trial will be coming down here in the next uh, couple of moments. Yeah, back to the jury. They uh, were, we believe, taking out potentially a different exit. Um, they were told, as Dane mentioned, not to speak to the media until they were in their cars off the property here. So they were ahead of me as I left the courtroom. I was asked to stop for a moment to allow the jurors to exit, um, and they did not use the main elevators as the rest of us did. It was interesting. Uh, I think I asked the question of Dan Webb. What, did he think there was any particular evidence that swung the jury in their favor? And he said it was, he pointed out a couple things. One of them, the rope. Um, he, he made a point during his uh, closing arguments that sometimes it's the simple things, it's the logical things that juries look at. And he was, he did a good job, I thought, throughout this case of uh, kind of blowing little holes in the logistical defense theory of the case. You were in the courtroom when he made some of those points, and, and he, was, he was scoring some hits, wasn't he? Yeah, and he also brought up just now, as he did during the trial about the eggs that Jussie Smollett testified that the night of the attack he was going to Walgreens to get eggs. Now he had lived in that apartment for some time and he claimed he didn't know that that Walgreens was not a 24-hour Walgreens. Well the prosecution kind of grilled him on that you know what do you mean you didn't mm -hmm. know it wasn't a tw or it, it wasn't a 24-hour Walgreens. Um, so he said special prosecutor Dan Webb today kind of reiterated that that story he thought just didn't make sense that Smollett would go and get eggs and just happen to run into the and Darrow brothers. And Webb really made a, a point of that during his closing arguments. He was very, he was very straightforward, very matter of fact during his closing arguments. Not particularly demonstrative, but about the eggs. He did. He he kind of jeered that particular point. He said to the jury, "Eggs? Does this make any sense to you?" And evidently, it didn't make sense to them. Yeah, they they sided with the special prosecutor on that one here. Um, again, finding Smollett guilty on five of six counts, not guilty on that sixth count, which pertained to an aggravated battery. Report to a Chicago police detective about two weeks after the attack. And now we are seeing some of the Smollett family members, his mother coming down, being walked through the courtroom. We have been hearing from Smollett's uh, media representatives that he will not be making a statement, he will not be talking. Uh, all of their comments are going to come from their lead defense attorney, Nene Uche. So that's the scene. We're again waiting for a defense attorney to come down and uh, and rebut, uh, although it's too late for the trial, but rebut some of the points that Dan Webb made. A very animated Dan Webb. I want to point out to you guys, he's 76 years old. He's been working uh, a lot of hours on this case, and he is uh, he certainly was spirited here tonight in talking about the case. Back to you. Okay, um, obviously we are, we've heard the uh, jury's verdict. Uh, we respect the judiciary, we respect the uh, trial by jury process, so we're not going to criticize that. We're obviously very disappointed. Uh, we obviously respectfully disagree with the jury's verdict. The verdict is inconsistent. Uh, you cannot say Jussie is lying and Jussie is not lying for the same exact uh, incidents. So we feel 100% confident that this case will be uh, won on appeal. Unfortunately, that's not the route we wanted, uh, but sometimes that's the route uh, that you have to take to win, uh, especially a case where we remain 100% confident in our client's innocence. Uh, from the first day of this case, his case has been prejudged, his case has been tried in the media, uh, and it's unfortunate. This is the United States of America. We live in a constitutional democracy where everyone is presumed innocent. Uh, but obviously, uh, if we're being honest, that hasn't been the case. Uh, in social media, in the media, he's been tried and convicted before his day in court. Uh, but we are confident in our appellate system, we're confident in our uh, Illinois Supreme Court, and we're confident uh, that at the end of the day, what's out there in the news media and in the gossip forums are not going to stand a chance in court. Um, Mr. Smollett said he was attacked, he, he gave a description of his attackers, and what a lot of people don't know is a witness came to court, and I'm not going to say his name for privacy reasons, and testified to the exact same thing. This witness was a security guard that knew nothing of this case, that didn't know Mr. Smollett, but, but recounted and corroborated his, his account of events. Uh, it's pretty disappointing what happened, uh, but we remain confident that we're going to come back uh, and he's going to be vindicated. Lawyer Questions? Lawyer Rodriguez, yes. 
What, what is your response? To that? Obviously, that's ridiculous. Uh, we believe we remain confident, and on appeal, uh, he's going to be cleared of all. Uh, all accusations on all charges. Again, I, I think everyone needs to focus on the fact that this is an inconsistent verdict. Uh, you cannot, everything, everything uh, stems from one incident. Jussie was not accused of, of doing two different things. And he was accused of doing one thing and charged multiple times for the same incident. A jury cannot come out and say guilty of lying, but not guilty of lying. It, it doesn't make sense. But again, we respect the, uh, the uh, judicial process, we respect the jury process, but we feel confident we'll be back here. There was, there was so much doubt in this case, and, and doubt because he is absolutely 100% innocent. Any other questions? Please? To be clear, you do plan to appeal the conviction? Oh, 100%. Okay. Hey, hey, for those people who say this has gone on long enough, yes. uh, this has cost taxpayers too much, why keep going through this with an appeal? What do you say to Well, I, you know, obviously, easy for them to say. If, you, if you're being convicted of something that you did not do, or why wouldn't you want to appeal? That's why we have appellate courts. But, but let's talk about that. You know, this is a class four uh, felony case. They've spent millions of dollars prosecuting this case. Uh, I'm not saying that no case should be taken seriously, but they've spent millions of dollars. We had the first black female prosecutor elected into Cook County uh, as a state's attorney, and she was second guest, Kim Fox. She made an executive decision, and she decided not to prosecute this case. And she was second guess, and someone was appointed to prosecute it. Uh, so the question has to be asked, why was so much money and resources spent re-prosecuting this case when we have thousands and thousands of people dying, hundreds of people dying in Chicago from gun violence? Why aren't resources being diverted to those situations? We have drug cases, people dying in the suburbs of, of drug overdose. Why aren't resources being focused on that? Why is everyone so focused on, oh, Jussie Smollett uh, allegedly called the police and, and made a fal false report, even though obviously we 100% we, we stand firm, sorry, Timer, that he didn't do that. But, but the question has to be asked. It's not on Jussie. Uh, to, it's not on anyone to say, Mr. Smollett, you shouldn't waste resources by pursuing this case any further. Of course he should, because that's his, his guilt and innocence in the line, and we believe he's innocent. But the question should be asked is, why are they spending resources focused on this type of a case? Next question. Uh, we work for free, so how are you, how are you aligning that to spend millions of dollars in resources? I'm sorry, what did you say? The web's office work pro bono. You see, I'm not going to comment on... But, um, but you're saying they spent millions of dollars in prosecuting, in the prosecution here. And okay. I, I, so I I, no, that's fine. Have you seen yeah. the invoice? What? Have you seen any invoice? Seen invoice? Okay, so you know, we all know, I mean, those that have been following this case, you're supposed to, you know, there, there are supposed to be filings for invoices. I haven't seen one yet. I, I, I'm sure there'll be one at some point in time. But this is based on the math we've done. We've, we've talked that we came on this case in February. We're talking to the, to the previous attorneys and the legal team. Uh, it's obvious a case like this. Look at all of you here. It, it didn't cost, uh, it's not a situation where this costs one dollar to prosecute. Next question. What is just you see, he's disappointed, but he remains confident. He's 100% confident that this will be reversed on appeal, and we remain confident. That's why we live in the number one constitutional democracy. Regardless of what people are saying out there, people who are not lawyers, people who are not in court, people commenting and giving the ideas from 30,000 uh, uh, you know, above sea level when they're not in court, at the end of the day, uh, we believe justice will prevail. We don't believe it was done today, but we're very confident that uh, he will be cleared and he will be found to be innocent. Did, you Did Jesse tell you that he wants you to appeal the conviction? Did he ask you that after court today? Obviously, I'm not going to discuss you know, attorney-client privilege with my client, but what I will tell you is absolutely we're, going, we're planning on filing an appeal on this case. Did you get a fair hearing in court? I'm sorry? Did you get a fair hearing in court? <laughs> how I, I'm going to reserve my comments on that. Obviously, you know, I plead the fifth. How about that? Next question. You know, obviously, again, this is a class four felony. It's right above a misdemeanor. Uh, in my, from my historical perspective, I used to be a prosecutor in, in this courthouse, and I think everybody here, we're, we're all former prosecutors. I've never seen a case like this where a person got jail time. And he shouldn't because he's innocent. Next question. Any other question? Describe in the courtroom. I mean, you were there. Yes. You, you know, I, I, I put it to you this way. Uh, it, was a, it was a very unusual um, proceeding. I, I have, I've handled um, homicide type cases. I have never felt uh, this, uh, you know, 
gone through the emotional roller coaster we went through in this year, and I, I think that's the most diplomatic thing I would say. Uh, uh, but I, I don't, for one second, believe uh, that justice was done today, and that's my opinion. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say, obviously, everyone wants police officers to investigate crime, right? I'm not going to stand here and say they shouldn't. But what you need to remember is this is an innocent man. And, and also, there was a lot that was said in court. The jury got to hear that no one has ever heard before. Uh, we, we have the case of a security officer who saw the exact same thing that Mr. Smollett saw. There's a lot of uh, uh, misstatements put out there. Mr. Smollett said he saw two MAGA hat wearing people run away. Well, we found out in court that that never happened. Mr. Smollett said uh, that he saw someone with pale skin between a ski mask. Well, we found out in court that an independent witness confirmed what he said. And, and so, you know, I, I, I hope and I'm confident in our appellate court that we'll get a fair, tr we'll get a fair result there. I'm sorry? Yes. You know, a lot of stuff happened in this trial, and I, I'll just ask you to, you know, Matt, you were, you were in court every day. I, I watched some of your updates. Um, I will ask you to, to go back and listen to carefully to what some of the witnesses were saying, and that's what I'll, I'll put it in terms of, um, you know, how some of them felt uh, on the witness stand. I'll, I'll leave it to you that way. Is there a reason Frank Gatson didn't testify? I mean, Frank Gadsden is his own person. You know, you can, you can only ask people to come to court. Uh, sometimes you can't force them um, out of state. Uh, well, we're not going to go into uh, legal strategy uh, at this time. Okay? No, no, he's not planning on speaking. Let's be real. Let's be human beings here. He's a human being. He's disappointed. But, but I, I will tell you this. I am very proud of him. I'm very, very proud of him. He's holding up very strong. He's committed to clearing his name, and he is 100% confident uh, that he's going to get cleared by our appellate court. And, and I feel there's, there's so many issues with this case. And for those reporters who've been following this case, uh, nothing I'm saying here should be, should be surprising. This case is seriously flawed uh, from the initial inception. I mean, should a special prosecutor have been appointed? The answer is, from our perspective, absolutely not. You know, and, and so that's our position in this particular issue. Yes. Um, yeah. Three more questions, please. Yeah, well, I, I, let's put it this way. I, I'm not going to compare things, boy, historically, uh, just because of a jury. <laughs> just because a jury says, um, uh, gives a verdict doesn't mean it's, it's, it's the right one. You know, now, you know, we respect the jury system, but that's why we have appeals. I mean, if we, if we accepted everything a jury did, uh, we wouldn't have an appellate court, would we now? Okay? Two more questions. In terms of who actually attacked him, I understand yes. uh, uh, Jesse told Mr. Webb that he wasn't sure whether the brothers were the actual culprits. Who does he believe are the actual cul culprits? Are they still out there? What, can, you, can you give some shape to that? That's one thing that Mr. Webb then used in his closing mm -hmm. to, to, to suggest that he was lying. Okay, so, so you, you know, this case, you, you have access to the transcripts. Uh, this case is, um, uh, here's what I'll say on this issue. Um, how is he supposed to know who attacked him? He's not a police department. He's not the Chicago police. He's not the Chicago Detective Bureau, right? He's not supposed to know. They need to do... They, guys, when you look at the transcripts and you, you focus in on some of the detective's testimony, you realize that a okay. quality investigation was never carried out. That's our position. It, it, they, there was a lot of quantity to it, 3,000 hours of uh, police manpower spent. But where was the quality? You had witnesses that were never interviewed. We had to bring in the security guard who corroborated everything Jesse said into court. Nobody brought in, him in. The prosecution team did not. And, and so you have to understand, unfortunately, we were facing an uphill battle where Jesse was already tried and convicted in the media. And then we had to somehow get the jury to forget or unsee all the news stories they had been hearing that were negative for the last three years. So, so that's difficult. So at the end of the day, you have access to multiple witnesses that you can go interview. My father was a professor of journalism. Right? You can conduct your, 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 your investigative journalism and go find his witnesses. Frank Gatson, you mentioned him. Go find him. Go talk to him. Uh, the, the other two, I don't want to mention their names for privacy reasons, but go talk to these people, right? Because Chicago police, in my position, it's our position, should have investigated this case much more, much more thoroughly. Okay? Last question, please. Where do you think the ground for Where do you think the ground for <laughs> I, we will be here for 10 hours if I start listing the grounds of appeal. I, we will be here for a long time, you know, and, and 
I, I'm not going to go through that now. I think I'll save that for my legal brief. Okay? Thank you so much, and God bless everyone. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Tina, do you want to say anything? You represent the judge, Justice from the start. I think the name Mm -hmm. Too, too good Real boss keep 